Uh, welcome to HTML5 uh, webinar series from jpassion.com. Today's topic is media. Uh, by media, we are talking about audio and video. So let's move on. So these are the setup topics that we are going to cover. So we will talk about what is and why HTML5 audio video support. We'll talk about the concept of video container formats, concept of codecs, and then we'll spend most of our time looking into video element that was introduced in HTML5 and track sub element. And then we can see how we can perform some JavaScript control against the video element. And we'll talk about some advanced features and uh, media capture and lastly, libraries and frameworks out there that you can use. So what is and why HTML5 and audio video support? Uh, before we move on to that, you know, if you take a look at the history of audio and video support on a browser, uh, in old days, around 2000, browsers have to install multiple plugins. Uh, for example, Real Player, QuickTime, and Windows Media Player. And then around 2004 and 2008, Flash becomes a dominant video plugin. Okay? And uh, then to around 2009, HTML5 was introduced with a native video support. Uh, 2012 and 2013 moving forward, uh, you know, there are about more than 80-85% uh, of the people are using HTML5 enabled browser. So you can see HTML5 native video and audio support uh, being very popularized, especially iPhone and iPad. Okay, so why HTML5 video? So it runs natively in the browser, meaning you do not have to install the plugins such as the Flash. Uh, simple coding, you know, you don't need to have all this complex coding for, you know, your uh, Flash plugin, for example. And uh, can be manipulated like just like any other DOM element. Video element is a genuine DOM element, so you can actually perform some transformation. For example, moving, resizing, uh, adding some style sheets, uh, the styles, and things like that. And of course, HTML5 video is a standard, meaning it's a feature proof. It's not just from a single vendor, uh, meaning uh, it does have a lot of vendor support as well and community support. And one good reason, uh, especially from iPhone, iPad users, is that iPhone and I, I, iOS devices, iPhone, iPad, do not support Flash, meaning HTML5 is basically only option uh, that is available for performing videos and audios. All right, so HTML5 introduced these two elements, audio and video tags. Let's talk about the concept of video containers and codecs. So when you see a file named as MP4 or AVI, those are containers, video containers. So those container file contains three things, video stream, audio stream, and metadata. And this video stream and audio streams are combined to play video. And the metadata includes subtitles, titles, uh, the covering art, and captions, and things like that. So a combination of these three data will make a container file. So when you see a container file, for example, mp4 file, video file.mp4 or org, uh, video file.org, uh, OGG or, or uh, OGV, yeah, it should be OGV, or uh, WebM. So these are the container format. So this container contains video stream format and audio stream format. So the MP4 container is using H H264 video codec. By the way, when I, whenever I say video stream format, I'm talking about video codec uh, format as well. Okay. So MP4 file is using H H264 video codec plus AAC audio codec or audio stream format. While OGG, uh, the container, uh, is using Deora video format and Robius audio format. And WebM is using VP8 video format and it's, it's also using Robius audio format. So this is the container. And this container contains video stream format or video codec based on this particular format and this particular audio format. 
Okay, so that is the video container file format. All right, now video codecs. So we talk about video codecs such as H264 and Theora and WebM here. Okay, the problem of video codec is that there is not a single codec that is being supported by all browsers at this point because of some uh, licensing issues, especially H264. So the H264 video codec or video stream format is being supported by three major uh, browsers, Chrome, Safari, and IE9. This is the one that contains some potentially royalty payment issues. In general, you don't have to actually worry about it uh, you know, for public information, a public uh, video, but uh, it might actually charge a company if the company has some commercial videos that are being accessed by you know, the public. Okay? So it does have some loyalty payment issues. That's the reason the, uh, the Safari doesn't support H.264. Okay? On the other hand, ORG, uh, ARC, Theora, and WebM, those are open sourced. Okay? So they are supported by Chrome, Firefox, and Opera and WebM also being supported by Chrome and Firefox Opera and i9. So as you can see, there is no single uh, video codec that is being supported by all browsers, and that's an issue. Fallback options. Uh, so one option you can use is to use multiple sources in your videos so that you know, if a browser does not support a particular format, it will fall back to, to the other one. And you can even actually fall back to all the way to Flash for older browsers. All the browsers which do not have HTML5 capability, they could actually disregard, they can ignore all the HTML5 uh, video tags and they can just go to Flash if the fallback is being used as a fallback. Flash is being used as a fallback. All right, there are a few tools out there. Most of them are, most of these are in fact the uh, open source and you can actually, you know, these are mostly uh, the uh, coding, encoding tools, or transcoding tools, okay? So if you have uh, the MP4 file, uh, if you want to convert to AVI, if you want to convert to WebM, you know, you can use these tools. All right, so let's do exercise one. So exercise one, what we want to do is we want to actually check the uh, browser support of a few, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, the video files. So what you want to do is, you know, uh, the uh, we want to see whether Chrome is supporting MP4, ORC, and WebM. Okay, so if you actually go to this, and uh, let's check whether I'm using Chrome at this point, and Chrome is supporting, by the, by the way, whenever you say probably, that means it's supporting it, okay? So it's supporting MP4, it's supporting ORC, and it's supporting WebM. Okay, now I want to try with uh, Firefox. Okay, so I'm going to actually open Firefox. And I'm going to actually open the file. Uh, and so map, HTML5, and uh, media, and sample HTML5. And the one I'm actually trying is this one. Can play type. Okay, so I'm testing uh, Firefox to see whether it can support MP4 videos. It should say no because it doesn't support it, okay? But it does support ORC and WebM, okay? Now let me try uh, Internet Explorer. So I'm going to just copy this file. So I'm going to just, yeah, I'm going to, okay, so it's accessing the same file. So let's see what it supports. See, it supports, uh, blah, blah, content. Uh, I'm not sure why it's not displaying it.
Oh, here we go. Okay, now it's answering it. Okay, all right. So it does support MP4, but it doesn't support org and it doesn't support WebM. Okay, all right. So that's exercise one. And uh, basically, you know, I'm actually we're going to take a look at this code later on. Uh, the uh, basically we are using uh, the API. Uh, basically, let me actually show the code. So it's basically calling uh, get play type method of video element okay so this is the video element i'm just getting the uh, reference to video element and i can call get can play type and here is just passing the uh, various uh, video format okay and see is actually being supported or not okay all right so you can see uh the uh, the uh, not everyone you know the the, the there is no uh, single video format uh, codec that is being supported by everyone uh, that situation might actually change moving forward with the H265 and, you know, others, okay? But uh, that's for the future. All right, so let's move on with the video element. So this is a single source. Uh, so here I have a single source called the movie WebM. And uh, if you say controls, that means, you know, it does have uh, controls. And this is a fallback. If the browser does not support a video element of HTML5, and this message will be displayed. Now, as I said before, because there is no single video format that is being supported by every browser, you might in fact have to provide a multiple sources. So here, uh, I'm actually displaying this video with this width and height and also provides the controls. And now I'm providing multiple sources, MP4, org, and WebM. And for as a fallback option, for those browsers which, which, which do not understand HTML5, I'm falling back to uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, Flash, okay? All right, video element con the attributes. So you can have a controls. It does provide the uh, built-in controls. Auto play whenever the, you know the uh, video is uh, the uh, loaded element is loaded, it will play automatically. Poster is that while video is being loaded, you can actually display some uh, you know the uh, graphics. Loop is going to actually loop the playing. Preload it will uh, it will actually preload. Uh, it doesn't play right away, but it will load. It will start the loading, and width and height uh, will actually provide the uh, width and height of the video. Now, it does. Video has a lot more than just this. These are important things that you know, typical things that you are going to use with your video element. However, video element has a lot of attributes and methods. Okay, so let's actually go to this link. So this is a video. So this is a native controls. Obviously, you can just kind of play this one, okay, All right? And uh, the uh, the um, uh, you know these are the these are the uh, um, uh, the, uh, the method you can use, okay? So and these are the properties. You can see current time property is actually being incremented, right? And uh, if you actually select the uh, mute, this is false, okay? So if I actually Change, let me see whether I can change this one. True. Oh, I can change from here. So if I say mute true, then it's muted. Okay, it's changed to true. And if I mute false, then it's changing back. Okay. And uh, I, you know, we, we can, yeah, you know, this is a play rate, playback rate. Uh, you know, I can just increase this one. It's going to actually move a lot faster. Okay. So, this is a reference site that you can see what kind of the uh, properties available and uh, what kind of these are you can think of like uh, you know the uh, uh, the uh, method okay so I can change the volume you know the um, and things like that so we'll, you know I, I'll let you actually play around this one in the hands on app okay all right So exercise two, let's go to the exercise two. So this is the uh, single video source. So let me just go to here. So okay. And if you take a look at the code, oh by the way, this is uh, the uh, this file is uh, MP4 file. So that's the reason if you try to run it with uh, the uh, Firefox, you are going to actually see this problem. Okay, uh, so that's the reason we want to have you know multi-source. Okay, so this is the code. You know, we thought it is just doing MP4 file. 
So multi-source, on the other hand, uh, could be actually played by most browsers because we actually have a multi-source file. So if you take a look at the code, it does provide the same file in org, org file format, MP4 format, and WebM format. So in fact, if you're actually running this guy with the Firefox, it's going to take the WebM version. And if you, in fact, you try to save this one, you know, it will save it as a WebM. Okay? So, you know, multi-source is from... It should work. Okay. All right. And that's multi-source. And timeline. So in this case, uh, you can specify, you know, the uh, timeline, meaning when, you know, how much, uh, when you want to start and uh, when you want to finish. So in this case, timeline is 10 to 20 seconds. So it's going to start from 10 to 20 seconds. So for 10 second duration, this one is starting and it will finish up to 10.5 seconds. This one is going to start right away, but it will end at two hours. This one is going to start from 15 through the end, but somehow I couldn't get this one to work. <laughs> okay. These three, these works, but this one didn't work. I tried both uh, the, uh, the uh, Firefox and uh, Chrome and I couldn't get this one to work. Okay. So let's try this. So as you can see, we have, uh, this is the first one. You can see this is actually starting from 10 seconds. Okay. Like this. This one, it will stop at 10.5 seconds. So that is actually this code. Uh, so, you know, this is the 10.5 uh, seconds, okay? So that's the second one. So if I start this one, uh, it will stop at that point. And of course, the third one is actually going to up to two hours, okay? Yeah, so it's almost there. Now it stopped, okay? The last one somehow I couldn't get you know get it to work. So I, what I want to do is I want to start from 15 seconds to the end, okay? But it's still actually like starting from the beginning. So I yeah I just couldn't figure out why that is the case. Okay, so that's a timeline. All right, so let's see. Okay, so that is the end of the uh, second exercise. So let's move on to the next. Track sub element or video elements. A track you can actually add like a subtitles. Subtitles are, you know, for translation to a different language. Captions is the transcription of the dialogue, sound effects, and musical cues and audio, uh, the uh, audio information for disabled audience. And chapters, you can also have a chapter information. You can also have uh, descriptions and metadata, but these two are not being supported. Okay, so what are being, what are being uh, three things that are being supported at track uh, the information is subtitles, captions, and chapters. Okay. Now, this information will be captured in the form of typically web VTT format. Okay. All right. Uh, the uh, the uh, track could have a multiple uh, attributes. So kind is uh, one of the five track types. Kind defaults to subtitles if no kind is included. So you know basically uh, the kind will let you select one of this, okay? All right. And the default is subtitles. Label for the track that will be shown to the user. For example, a menu that lists the different languages available for subtitles. And default attribute can be used to have a track default to showing. And otherwise, viewers will have to select their language from the captions and subtitles menu, okay? So, you know, in general, you want to actually set up the uh, default, okay? Uh, the SRC language is a language. So we're going to actually try the uh, couple of languages in the end zone lab. Uh, so this is the way, this is an example. So we have a video element, and then we have a multiple sources, and then we have uh, two subtitles, and one is English and the other one is Korean. And you have to provide uh, the, uh, the VTT file, web VTT file. Uh, of course, in this case, it should actually contain Korean language, Korean uh, language. Uh, the tools, uh, the, there is actually a tool from Microsoft that lets you actually create this VTT file really easy. Okay, so that's something that we're going to actually try in the hands-on lab. All right, so let's do exercise three. Now, um, you have to, uh, the, uh, the reason, the reason, so you have to actually start the web server because you cannot access the VTT file from local file system. This is actually single origin policy constraint imposed by the browser, okay? So we're gonna actually start the uh, HTTP server, 
uh, you know, Python version, which is very simple to use. So, you know, go to HTML5 media directory. That is a hands-on lab directory. So I'm going to actually go to H5, HTML5. 